climbing sort of has this stigma that the shoes are super uncomfortable. Every time I have a friend that's new to climbing, they're like, it was cool, but dude, the shoes. And right. I was like, just like, don't get a crazy pair, okay? What's going on, everyone? Nils Mitnick here, fellow gearhead with my friend. Quitty, quitty quit. I'm the gearhead here at Backcountry, and we're here to talk to you guys today about climbing shoes. Now, climbing shoes, um, especially in more recent years, have developed a lot of different options, and it be, can be pretty overwhelming, especially if you're newer to climbing, to figure out what climbing shoe is best for you, and especially the price point of how all of those shoes fluctuate. So I think maybe the best way to start this out is for someone that's new to climbing and where you would want to start with your climbing shoe. We've got two options that we wanted to show you today for the first shoe that you're gonna buy. What you'll see about these entry-level shoes, which are great for both gym climbing introduction or going outside sport climbing or, or entry-level bouldering outside um, to some degree, in that they are pretty simple in their construction and their platform. Um, they're gonna be super comfortable. The price point is gonna be that entry level. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of the features of these shoes. So the first shoe that we have is the Scarpa Origin. And the first thing that you're gonna see about uh, an entry level or a introductory shoe is that they're very flat in the last. In that there's minimal to limited downturn in the aggressiveness of the shoe. It's about a flat platform and it'll sit flat on the table. Um, what that's gonna allow for the shoe to do is to be super comfortable right out the box. It's gonna give you a stable platform to use to climb with. Generally a little bit of a thicker rubber to it um, so that you're gonna get more durability out of it as you kind of progress in your climbing. Because um, the first thing that people generally do when they start to learn how to climb is that they're gonna beat their shoes up. They're mm -hmm. gonna be in the gym, mm -hmm. they're gonna be stepping on plastic, they're gonna drag their toes and they're gonna wear through their climbing shoes yep. and ultimately having a comfortable shoe that's a little bit more durable is going to take you a long way. Yeah, I mean that was kind of the biggest takeaway when I first got into climbing and I was talking to someone about what shoe would be best for me is initially I wanted to get like mid-tier higher performance shoe because I thought oh that will make me climb better. Right. But in all reality once you kind of get a better understanding is that the the entry level shoe is really great for you to sort of build your foundations because as you said like your your footwork will take time. Uh, to develop and in yes. those early stages you you drag your feet all over the place and you're uh, You know, you're gonna kind of beat up the shoe and if it's something more entry-level um, You are sort of less bummed when it's time to get a new pair or upgrade We've got two models here that are gonna show you the differences in kind of like general construction the origin comes with a velcro uh, Velcro lacing system the momentum lace which is from black diamond is a laced shoe mm -hmm. It also has a knit construction design So this shoe right out of the box is going to be super comfortable. It's going to kind of mold to your foot to some degree mm -hmm. I really like a lace shoe because you can dial in that performance fit mm -hmm. um, to some degree you can if you've got a wider midfoot or a wider toe box or any, like if you have a heel that doesn't quite fit in a certain way, you can loosen up the laces in the front, tighten the middle and wrench it down in the back. Um, yeah, you can kind of yeah. get that sub fit. Mm -hmm. in yeah, the lacing's really nice for uh, creating more variability in the shoe and kind of, if you're more foot sensitive, you can definitely like fine tune how tight it's gonna wrap around your foot and you know, from a performance standpoint, but also just maybe your actual enjoyment standpoint, that can right. make like a huge difference. At the end of the day, especially if you're newer to climbing, you want your first set of shoes to be comfortable. I think climbing sort of has this stigma that the shoes are super uncomfortable. Every time I have a friend that's new to climbing, yeah. they're like, it was cool, but dude, the shoes. And right. I was like, just like, don't get a crazy pair, okay? Get yes. something comfortable, it, figure out, like, learn the ropes, you know? Exactly, I think that's a great point. In when you're fitting for your first pair of shoes, the general rule should be find your street size, convert it where it needs to be converted. Some brands, Italian brands like Scarpa, La Sportiva, they're gonna come in a Euro size. We've got sizing charts on our website that'll give you the comparison. Start from your, sh your shoe size and Try to find and read on whether or not that that shoe is going to fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, if you can try the shoe on, that's great. Um, the other recommendation would be that you can go half size down from your normal street shoe size, especially in these entry level shoes, and you're generally mm -hmm. going to find a normal fit. But I'd say that start with your street shoe size. Yeah. Don't listen to those people that are telling you you got to downsize right off the bat, especially if it's your first shoe. Yeah. 
Because ultimately, you're gonna still be able to climb, you're gonna be comfortable, and then when it's the time this shoe's worn out and you need to upgrade, you're gonna be needing to upgrade anyways. There's a lot that you can gain from leaning into the, the, the comfort of the, of the entry level shoe, the fit, um, and giving yourself a chance to essentially learn and develop in your climbing instead yeah. of trying to overperform right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, just um, there's, a, there's a lot to learn. Um, no matter what, you're actually just always learning when you get into climbing, and you might as well start out by choosing some degree of comfort. And I will say that you can climb well above the pay grade of this shoe. I have yeah. friends who've climbed 512 sport climbing in a pair of Momentums. Yeah. I have friends who've climbed the Grand Teton in a pair of origin Origins, mm -hmm. and have done a bunch of different things in an entry-level shoe. Don't bash it, they're great shoes. Yep. Um, they're a really good value. I think we should move on to uh, shoes that are great for trad climbing specific. So the two models that we've got here for you are the updated TC Pro from La Sportiva and the Evolve Yosemite. Um, so with trad climbing, you're gonna be spending a lot more of your day, and we're talking about multi-pitch trad, even on a single pitch trad route, um, there's some good viability for the reasons for these shoes, but when you're trad climbing, you're usually spending a longer day on the rock, um, especially multi-pitch. Um, so you're gonna want a shoe that's both comfortable, but also high performing, mm -hmm. and it needs to perform in kind of a different set of mm -hmm. climbing conditions. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I think the two things I think of when I consider a day out trad climbing is that you're putting your shoe through a more specific uh, set of constraints, one of which will be most likely jamming it into a crack. Right. And another thing, I, especially in the Wasatch or if you're in Yosemite or something like that, you will be doing slab climbing. And these shoes are kind of tailored towards those two more common scenarios that trad climbing has. So what you'll see from a construction is that still a pretty flat last to the, to the build, um, but ultimately there is a little bit of downturn that's built into the frame of the shoe. Um, it's given itself a little bit more tension so that when you're tightening that shoe down, you're getting a little bit of performance because you're, you're gonna be climbing some steeper things and especially when you're crack climbing, you're gonna want that stability. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that there's overbuilt rubber on the, the, on, on the top side of the, the shoe. That's primarily to protect the shoe from getting beat up when you're jamming it in cracks. Because um, usually you're going to be slamming your foot in sideways, you're going to be turning it, you're going to be wrenching on it, and you're going to want something that's not only protecting your feet, but protecting the shoe. Um, and that's going to lead to more higher performance when you're, when you're crack climbing. Generally, these track climbing shoes that we see that are top sellers um, are their lace systems so that you mm -hmm. can get that performance fit um, and a little bit of variability where if you have a wider forefront, you can tension it in that way. They also generally have a little bit of a higher cuff on the ankle. Um, that's primarily to protect your ankle when you're doing crack, when you're going crack climbing and maybe some off-size cracks. If you're shoving your whole foot into a fist size or you're doing an off width or something like that, it's just gonna protect you. It also gives a little bit of ankle stability when mm -hmm. you're turning your foot sideways and, and cranking on it. It's gonna give you something that your ankle can kind of sit and lean into. Yeah, and I think, you know, kind of the main takeaway because I just recently, got a pair of more trad specific shoes. And what I noticed out the gate is that it is a pretty stiff shoe. And it makes sense because at least when I've gone trad climbing, you spend a lot of time wading your feet. And that right. might be like wading them in cracks, that might be slab climbing requires a bunch right. of foot weight. And you know, that's sort of another aspect of these shoes is that they're built out in a way to add support um, for a lot of foot weight. That's a great point, Nils, in the sense that these shoes definitely have a stiffer platform in the toe box. Like, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to flex that. Mm -hmm. And what that gives you is that stability for you to be able to stand on smaller footholds, little edges on the side of the cliff. Um, I found that there's different rock types that it, this type of shoe is great for. I'd see these are king for granite. Um, anytime that yeah. you're climbing on granite and you're doing any sort of crack climbing, unless it's steep sport climbing on granite, which is hard to find, but there are roots out there, um, you're gonna love a, a shoe like the TC Pro. It's gonna give you that stability, it's gonna give you that, that, that platform that you're gonna want for when you're edging or when you're slab climbing, it's gonna give you that kind of grip to the rock um, without feeling too soft or too loose in any degree. Um, it's just gonna be a great all around, great equalizer for, for granite and other types of rocks like that. So the next shoe uh, category that we'll move on to is more of the sport slash aggressive steep climbing shoes. Yep. 
climbing uh, the styles diverge in numerous directions and one thing that you can get a little bit mixed up or um, spun around in is that it really depends on the type of rock you're gonna be climbing on. That That is like maybe the biggest um, parameter into what kind of shoe you should be looking for. You know, and I'll, I'll let you take it from here and kind of start to run us through what these two would be most ideal for. Yeah, so as Nil said, uh, Rock is is the kind of the the great determiner for what's going to be the best uh, pick for your shoe. So let's say that we're trying to climb some steep limestone and there's pockets or, or really tight edges, but we're on vertical to slightly overhanging um, terrain. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Shaman Pro from Evolve and we've got the La Sportiva solution. Um, with the Shaman Pro, it has a really cool lacing system that it's a single Velcro uh, tensioning system and you can wrench it down and you can get it pretty tight. It, it's gonna pull your foot down into the heel pocket. Mm -hmm. It's gonna give you that higher performance fit. It's, it also has a bit of a stiffer toe box platform and an mm -hmm. edging profile mm -hmm. so that if you are on that vertical limestone or those little edges, you're, you're gonna be able to, to edge into those. It also has a protected toe box in the sense that if you're, if you're dragging your toe or if you need to heel hook on something, so this shoe actually has some viability in bouldering as well, mm -hmm. um, when you need to to do some of those volume type moves where you're actually using your feet to sort of pull instead of press. Same thing with the Sportiva solution. This shoe is timeless. It's been around from in the line for Sportiva. They've upgraded it a few times. It's a fan favorite and for a lot of good reasons. Yeah. It has a great fit. It's got a very good performance to it. Um, it climbs steep roots like it, it wants to eat them for breakfast. Um, the toe box is, it narrows out to a point that's great for getting into pockets or standing on really small footholds. Um, you're able to use this in a lot of variety. I will say that the midsole is super soft. So if you find yourself on slabby terrain with a pair of solution, your feet are gonna get super tired pretty quickly. Yep. Um, you're not gonna have much to stand on. Same thing goes for the Shaman Pro. There's a little bit more stiffness here in yep. the active band here that's gonna give you some some stiffness on stability on that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like these are softer in the midsole. So your feet are gonna get more fatigued if you're ending up climbing on lower angle terrain yep. or trad climbing in a pair of shoes is yeah. definitely not recommend. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, that kind of, right, like the, uh, the terrain takeaway for a shoe like this would be places that you're gonna be at that sort of vertical to like slightly overhung climbing where you're sort of, you still are weighting your feet with a considerable amount of your body weight, but you're also requiring a bit more maybe finesse or like a little bit of give from your shoes um, to kind of gain like traction and performance from the shoe. Exactly. And, you know, that's like, it's sort of something that I learned a little bit later on in climbing because I went from a introductory shoe when I first started and then my, my second shoe that I got, I went straight to the like, stiffest shoe I could get because in my mind I was like my feet are gonna be on small things I want like a shoe that just won't blow out but essentially it kind of backfired because at the end of the day you you still need to have like some cushion and some give from your shoe to sort of feel out what you're standing on and um, you know how hard you can press on it right the next category that we're gonna talk about is the sort of steep gym competition climbing uh, climbing shoe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and with that, sort of your, your bouldering shoe. Now, these shoes you will find are similar to your like sport climbing performance shoe, but they are a bit more sensitive. So it's gonna be a softer shoe. And something, you know, we'll kind of get into this uh, theory is that look how soft and bendable that midsole is compared to something like the TC Pro, where like you give it some effort and like I can kind of bend the back, but I'm not bending this like toe box section at all. And you know, the shoe's actually really cool because it's been um, sort of designed for like a more modern era of climbing, which is if you've been into any of the gyms in recent years, you will see that there's maybe gonna be like some corner of the gym that all these like super strong people are gonna be hanging out in <laughs> and they're climbing on like massive volumes that don't really even have holds and they're jumping around and it's almost this like different sport in itself. And that is um, kind of the world of competitive climbing as we know it. And the theory is sort sort of built around that style of climbing. So what you're gonna have in a shoe like this is that there is not only like robust rubber around the entire shoe because on those types of problems, you're gonna be like, not just like doing some dainty toe hook, but you're gonna be like 
clawing your entire foot around some of those volumes to make your way up. And it's also combined with a very sensitive build. So you can really feel like all of the different aspects of what you're climbing on, as opposed to maybe not getting as much feeling out of one of your like steep performance shoes. So then moving on, we have the Instinct VS. Now, this is a shoe by Scarpa that I personally have spent the most time in. Uh, it's kind of a daily driver performance shoe. Now, it still is pretty soft, but you're gonna have a little bit more support than something like the Theory. Um, and that makes it a bit more well-versed for maybe outside bouldering, or if you like board climbing in the gym, you have a bit more support from the shoe, and you're able to like toe in a little bit more. And then also kind of one of my favorite aspects of this shoe is that the heel cup really sucks in your heel. And then you combine that with just like a single Velcro system that locks your foot into place. Um, this thing doesn't really go anywhere. And for me, it's it's been a really nice daily driver because it does have some degree of support. Like personally, I have sport climbed in this shoe a fair amount where a lot of friends around me might be in something like the solution. You know, but at the end of the day, a majority of my time in this shoe is spent either bouldering in the gym or bouldering outside, which is a bit more what it's specifically designed for. And with these shoes on the higher end of the performance scale when you're overhanging, this is where you can start to play with downsizing your shoe so that yeah. you're getting that tightest performance fit. Because ultimately, you shouldn't be wearing this shoe all day long. You should no. be potentially wearing it for two routes in a row if you're climbing outside, if you're in the gym. You might even be taking these off between burns or between two different sure. bouldering problems. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's some viability with, when you go to size these shoes, you definitely want them to be more performance fit. Mm -hmm. You don't want them loose, you don't want them baggy, you're not gonna gain all the features and functions and the performance of the, yep. of the construction if you've got them loose. Um, but ultimately, you still don't want them to be uncomfortable. No. Um, one of the gearhead tips and tricks is the plastic bag trick. So if you do end up downsizing your shoe and you often find that yanking them on is super difficult, one of the tricks that I've seen is that people use, and I've done it before, is you take a plastic bag and you actually like put it partially on your foot and you use that plastic to slip your foot in and then you yank the plastic out. That allows you just to get in there. Um, if you are downsizing that much where you're gonna need that technique, then you probably are gonna wanna keep your shoes on for a while because you're not gonna wanna do that every <laughs> single time. Um, but that's how you can gain where you can downsize and get that really high performance fit. Um, ultimately, it's like in ski boots, if you've got a really tight performance, tight fit, you're gonna feel like you're you're very agile and you're close to the boot, and it's the same thing with the climbing shoe. You're gonna feel like you're right on the foothold. So this is where you would wanna play with downsizing. I'd say in the entry level and in the track climbing shoe, entry level, definitely look at that street size shoe fit um, and find, find what fits well for you. For track climbing, you can come down a little bit, but these shoes generally fit more in a forgiving fit. They've usually got a little bit of a wider toe box and a heel that's more more forgiving. These shoes are gonna be a little bit specific, so you're gonna have to find which, what's the right fit and where yeah. you wanna go from the downside yeah. perspective. Yeah, exactly, and you know, I think that's like an important part of the process, right? Because if you look at the big picture, there's just so many climbing shoes out there, right? And if, you, you know, if you're new to it, you're gonna get your entry level pair. And then once you start to diverge in different styles, your trad shoe, your sport climbing right. shoe, your bouldering comp shoe, you know, the type of rock or uh, style of plastic that you're climbing on <laughs> will really determine the route you wanna go. And that, and that doesn't always like reflect your exact like skill level or skill set, you know? And like, once you sort of start to be able to diverge into more specific styles of climbing, use that maybe as your indicator of what type of shoe you might wanna try out. You know, to add another layer to that at this larger scale is that all of these brands have slightly different fits. You know, for, for me yep. personally, like, when I first started getting into performance climbing shoes, I wanted to do the La Sportiva solution, but it just didn't fit my foot the same way that the Instinct VS did, and that's kind of the route that I took with this shoe personally, you know? Right. That's what you're gonna run into, is that different brands have different fits, um, they come from different countries, different constructions, different things. Mm -hmm. You may need to play around for a bit in finding exactly what shoe works for you, um, but if you're at the gym, ask your friends. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a cool community thing. You'll see people wearing shoes, ask them how they like them. Yeah. I think that's the really cool thing about the climbing gym is that it's a community. Um, and I think a, a lot of people are willing and able to share what, they're, what they've learned on, in their climbing shoe experience. Um, and you probably will end up, like most of us, finding a shoe, like for me it's the solution, mm -hmm. where I'm gonna live and die by this thing if I'm yeah. going sport climbing. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And so. it's sick, when you do like finally find it, you know, I remember I think I went through, 
years of climbing before I tried something like the instincts, and it's that like aha moment where you're like, this is what it's supposed to feel like. This is awesome, right. you know, and um, you know, just kind of trust the process, and it's iterative, and it's okay to like try shoes, try new shoes, and eventually you'll find like the correct one for you because it's out there. Up next, we're gonna touch base on some questions that gearheads get asked all the time. First off, is it okay to walk in your climbing shoes? Uh, yes, yes, it is okay to walk in your climbing shoes. Um, I've done it a lot, and what you you may run into is, let's say you're climbing a, a trad route that ends out and it tops out, and there's actually no anchors, and you realize that it's a walk off, or you should know that before. Um, you may have forgotten your approach shoes to bring them with you on your harness, so you may need to walk off with your your climbing shoes on. Um, you can you can walk in your climbing shoes. First, it's not going to be very comfortable. Uh, second, you're gonna definitely wear them out if you do that. Do a lot of a lot of walking around in your climbing shoes. Mm -hmm. um, the third caveat I will say that if you're wearing your your, sh your shoes in the gym, do not walk into the bathroom with them on. <laughs> Take them off yep. when you go into the bathroom. You don't want to be the guy that goes in the bathroom walking around with your climbing shoes and then goes back and stepping on a bunch of plastic holds that people are gonna have to grab with their hands. Yeah. So that's the one caveat I will say. Don't walk into the bathroom with your climbing shoes on. Good advice. All right, so another question, what does TRAD stand for in climbing? Yeah, so TRAD actually stands for traditional climbing. Um, the reason why it's called traditional climbing is that um, as the sport came on, as we started to climb bigger cliffs and actually kind of excel more from like hiking slash mountaineering, mm -hmm. um, and we got into the vertical realm, um, it was a way to differentiate from all the other disciplines of climbing. So um, traditional climbing, now in the modern definition of it is when you're climbing routes that are using traditionally protected gear, which is camming devices, passive protection, in some cases pitons, um, but it's generally removable protection that you're mm -hmm. using to climb the route. Mm -hmm. um, that differentiates from sport climbing, which is there's bolts that, are, that have been placed into the rock. Mm -hmm. You're using a quick draw, um, but those bolts are permanently affixed to yep. the rock. Uh, and then that also differs from from bouldering, which is climbing on smaller, generally five to 20 feet tall mm -hmm. boulders, and you're topping out on top of the boulder and you're coming off the backside. Yep. And then as well as gym climbing, which is climbing that's specifically in the gym. So trad climbing stands for traditional climbing. Okay, we got another one. Is it okay to wear socks with your climbing shoes? Oh man, the time honored question. Is it okay to wear socks while it wearing climbing shoes? It depends who you're around. Exactly. <laughs> if, you ask, if you ask somebody from overseas, from Britain, they'd say, oh yeah, definitely you can climb in, in, in climbing <laughs> shoes with socks on. I'd say that you can. Is it yep. frowned upon? I don't know, it depends on who you're around, right? But yep. you may find that like, I don't know. Like if you're if you if you bought your shoes and they're a little bit too big, you realize, but you still want that comfort, but you don't want to downsize. You don't want to get into a smaller shoe because there's yeah. something wrong with your foot as far as you've got pain somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's no reason or problem in wearing sh socks with your climbing shoes. Mm -hmm. People are, may give you weird looks, but if you wear it with confidence, you can do it. So I'd say, my personal opinion is, I don't do it all the time, but I have worn climbing yep. shoes with socks yeah. before. It, it it happens and. It, you know, it's it's not something that you can't do. Yeah. It's not gonna hurt your climbing shoes. It will maybe stretch them out. So mm -hmm. if you consistently do it and your, your, your shoes fit fine at one point and you wear socks all the time, you may stretch them out. But I'd say, I don't know. I don't know what your opinion yeah. is now. Yeah, yeah, totally. But. No, I think we're probably on the same page. And um, what I've seen, what I've done personally with socks and climbing shoes is that uh, if I want my feet to be warmer, I will put some socks on. And That's climbing a is example. a sport that you, um, you're trying to find oftentimes cold conditions that are like more grippy rock, right. less sweaty hands to be able to climb things. Uh, and sometimes those mornings can be like super crispy yep. and I just don't want my like shoe to warm up just yet. I'm not feeling that extreme in the morning and I just, I'm gonna keep my socks on. That's, and my that's feet totally kind of warm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the caveat is that um, there is a noticeable difference in the feel and performance yes. of the shoe, which is like a big part of a climbing shoe. You'll lose that sensitivity when you wear socks. Mm -hmm. So if you're there for comfort, sure. If, yeah. if, you, if you want to have the feel, probably not. So that's our two cents. Maybe you can let us know what you think down in the comments below. Socks or no socks? All right, so that's climbing shoes. Uh, if you have any other questions, please reach out to a gearhead. And if you like this, like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.